Steve Sufflettle here. Let's discuss the ink and the damping rollers on the Ryobi 2800. Well, all the rollers, uh, the collection of all the rollers is called the ink train. And the reason why it's called the ink train is because just like a locomotive train is a series of individual cars that get connected together, uh, the ink train is a series of rollers that get connected together, hence the name ink train. So if you count these rollers up, there's a total of 12 rollers in this ink train. And uh, the more rollers you have in the ink train, and the more ink form rollers you have, the better the quality of the printing. Now on the Ryobi 3302, there's 22 rollers, 15 are inkers, and 3 are ink form rollers, and 6 rollers are in a dampener with one water form roller. So that's a comparison of the 2800 to the 3302. Now the purpose of the ink train is to transfer ink from the ink fountain all the way to the plate. And we expect that the ink film thickness or the IFT, ink film thickness on paper, is about one micron. And the abbreviation for a micron, as you know, is a UM. And a micron is one millionth of an inch. And in terms of inches in decimal form, that's 0 0.00004 inches is a micron. Um, now each time the ink transfers from one roller to another roller, it gets split in half. So 50% of the ink stays on a roller and 50% of the ink transfers to the next roller. We should probably talk about the roller composition. There's two choices here. Either a roller is made out of a soft rubber, a synthetic polymer, or it's a rigid roller, a hard roller made out of either plastic or metal. So on the Ryobi 2800, there are six soft rubber rollers and the rest of them are hard rollers. And the roller composition is going to alternate between soft, hard, soft, hard, so that we, good hit, so that we have a good surface area contact between rollers. Now the softness or the hardness of a roller is called the durometer. And we should measure and check those durometers because as a roller ages, it typically gets harder. Now some of the rollers in the ink train are gear driven, so they will not come out of the press easily. And those are indicated by these thick lines. Uh, the Ryobi 2800 has seven rollers that are easily removed. Um, and the other rollers uh, may be driven by friction, either by weight or by some spring load. So the rollers that are inside the press that don't come out are gear driven but the other rollers that do come out are typically friction driven by either their own weight, gravity, or by some type of a spring load. Um, the size of the roller is measured by its cross width dimension, and we call that diameter. And a diameter can be measured with a micrometer or a caliper. Once we know the diameter, uh, the circumference or the outer perimeter, which is the repeat length, can be calculated. So the formula or the equation for circumference is pi times diameter, where pi is a constant in math, 3.14. Now some rollers, well most of the rubber rollers, as they age and they lose their plasticizers, they'll start to shrink and get smaller in diameter. Okay, let's identify these rollers. Um, so. Let's talk about each roller by its location, its name, uh, what type of motion it has, its composition, and the purpose of that roller. So the first thing we can take a look at here is the ink fountain. And the ink fountain uh, consists of a single piece metal blade that has screws or keys beneath it. And as you turn those keys, you meter the amount of ink to the ball roller, and we would meter the amount of ink that goes across the sheet side to side, right? The next roller of interest would be the ball roller. So this is the ink fountain roller, or often called the ball roller, and this is part of the press, permanent, it's metal. And uh, as it turns, we call that the sweep. So the sweep is the duration of time or the length of distance that that um, fountain roller, the ball roller, is going to have in contact with the ductor roller, right? And we, of course, have a 
sweep adjustment on the press that's adjustable. The next roller of interest would be the ductor roller. And the ductor roller is rubber, soft rubber, and its motion is to reciprocate forward and backward, forward and backward, making contact, breaking contact. It's going to take a charge of ink from the ball roller and transfer it to the rest of the ink train. So that motion is called ducting, and we have two ductors. We have one on the inker, uh, number two here, and we also have one for the dampener, roller number 11 that we're looking at there. Okay. Uh, roller three is a, um, a, a distributor roller, uh, an intermediate roller. Um, rollers four and roller six are identical in size and diameter. So they are interchangeable, and we often call these distributor rollers. Rollers 5, 7, and 10 are all oscillating rollers or vibrating rollers. And what oscillating and vibrating rollers do is they move laterally along their shaft, so they move left and right, and what they're helping to do is even out the ink uh, to be more uniform. So it helps reduce ghosting, starvation, and reroll. These are all print defects that might show up in the printed images. Rollers eight and nine are ink form rollers. And a form roller is any roller that touches or contacts the plate. Uh, in the letter press days, the plate was called the form, hence the name form rollers. Note that they're different sizes. Uh, the one on the top is smaller in diameter and the one on the bottom is bigger in the diameter. So the easy way to remember this is B for big, B for bottom. Now the pressure setting between these form rollers and the plate needs to be visually looked at and checked, and we call that the stripe method. So for these rollers, their stripe should be about three millimeters wide, and of course they should be parallel and even on the plate when you stripe them. Finally, uh, let's talk about the dampening rollers here. So, uh, rollers 11 and 12 are part of the dampening system, where this is the water pan roller or fountain roller. Um, 11 is a soft rubber roller, but 12 is a hard plastic roller. And uh, 12 is called the pan roller because it sits in the fountain pan where the fountain solution liquid goes. 11 would be the metering roller because it squeezes uh, the water into a very film, thin, uh, film, excuse me, very thin film. And again, as we noted earlier, 11 is a ductor roller, so it is adjustable in terms of its ducting. So the initial preliminary setting for your water ducting should be about a three for the process color inks that we use. Now if it's set too low, uh, too little fountain solution, uh, the plate will become dry and then you get that dirty background which we call dry up. Now since there's no separate dampening form roller, this type of dampening system is called an integrated dampening system because the dampening system is part of the inking system. And we would also call it, well, we wouldn't call it continuous because it ducts. So if it's ductless, it would be continuous. If there's any ducting involved at all, which is the case here, it would not be a continuous dampening system. When we get over to the Ryobi 3302s, they are in fact continuous. There is no ducting on the dampening system. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye now.